Good morning and welcome to our special Facebook Live series called Expert Connections. I'm Julie Holton. I am the founder and principal strategist of M Connections Marketing Agency. We work with a variety of businesses and individuals, all of whom right now, just like you, are feeling the changes and challenges, the impact of COVID-19. So we've launched this special series of live interviews here on Facebook to really work through this and navigate through this together. I'm so glad you're joining us this morning. We've had thousands of people reaching out and connecting with us through this video series. So I'm so glad to see that it's helping those of you at home as again, as we all adjust. We hear you, we see you, and we are in this together. So I wanna quickly tell you about who we've had on our series so far so that you can check out these interviews that might be helpful to you in the um, video section on our Facebook page. Just click on that video tab. Uh, Sherry Pash of Strategic Solutions for Growth yesterday talked about how to sustain our business relationships while working from home and navigating in this new, hopefully temporary norm. Ashley Willis of Michigan Premier Events shared some great insight about uh, postponing events and conferences. Jerry Norris of The Flex talked about what he's doing safely now that his event center is closed to team up with other restaurants that are also closed to help provide food to those who need it. PuroClean of MidMichigan talked about professional biohazard services, uh, specifically pertaining to coronavirus cleanup. And then we had Catherine Trustain of Catherine Trustain Wellness, who talked to us about our own personal health and wellness. So all of those videos are in our video section um, of our page. This morning, a little switch up, and I'm so excited for this. Normally, you only hear her voice, but this morning, my co-host of Think Tank of Three podcast is joining me live. Audrey, I think, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Julie. Hello, it's bright and early there in Seattle. So well, I don't um, know that it's bright yet. It's <laughs> well, you Seattle. know, it's pretty gray here in Michigan too. So, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty gray and early. How about that? <laughs> yeah, perfect, perfect. <laughs> Those of you at home, um, it is time to grab your cup of coffee or whatever you might be drinking. We are not judging. Audrey, it's coffee because she's working. I know we, we chatted it's really about not that. Coffee. Uh, it's not I, coffee. It's not coffee. I, I, because of this whole quarantine, have decided that, that since I'm home, I'm going to try new things. So I'm trying to give up coffee and I am drinking. Oh, that's brave. I know. I know. But I'm, <laughs> I've got I've got this thing called mud water, which doesn't sound very good, but it's actually pretty tasty. It's like a golden latte. Oh, that does sound interesting. Well, and I know Catherine Trustain was telling us she's also cut out coffee because um, coffee can be, it's a stimulant, right? So uh -huh. it, can, it can induce anxiety. So if you're already right. feeling a little anxious at home, cut out the coffee. I have not braved that just yet. I'm still drinking coffee. But, There's nothing wrong with drinking coffee. I, right? I'm trying. Well, and let's say it. I mean, it's 11 o'clock here in Michigan, 8 a.m. in Seattle, but it's 5 o'clock somewhere. So if you're mm -hmm. home with the kids or you're not working and you want to put something else in your cup, who are we to judge? Whatever. I mean, it's perfect time for mimosas, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I need to rethink what I'm drinking. Um, anyway, those of you at home, give us a thumbs up. Let us know you can hear us. I can see Stephanie's there already. Um, Allison has joined us. Thanks, guys. Um, thanks for joining us. So, Audrey, we joke about um, about what's in our cups of coffee mm -hmm. but, or what's in our cups. Um, but the reality is that right now, this is all really surreal. And, yeah. um, and people need to feel connected. So this virtual hangout is a great way to connect. Um, we talk a lot on Think Tank of Three about connecting with your tribe. We might be quarantined to our homes right now, but it's still important to stay connected. We don't need to be alone. Right. Well, and I think, especially for the Think Tank of Three tribe, we're all online anyway. So this is like, this is almost like an elevation of it, right? Like now we're doing video instead of just audio. Like it's nice to see the faces. It is. And you know what? I'm going to tell them a secret. Audrey does not like video. Like we've talked oh, about, like, oh, should we live stream while we're doing our podcast recordings? And mm -mm, she won't have it. So um, here you go, you guys. I guess it took um, something pretty drastic <laughs> happening to get Audrey on video. <laughs> but you look great. Like, I, I mean, I'm going to see you, your shiny face, smiling face every day. I mean, that's fine. Just don't record it. <laughs> True, true. Okay, I can get behind that. Okay, so let's kind of switch to some seriousness a little bit here. Um, how do we stay sane during all of this, Audrea? I mean, 
where, you, you know, you, you're working from home. I mean, you're, you're used to working from home once in a while. I run a virtual agency, so I'm used to working from home whenever I'm not with clients. Right. But even the mindset that we can't leave or shouldn't leave, even if we wanted to, that changes things. How do we stay sane? It really does change things. So I think, you know, for every person, it's going to be different. There's no like magic sauce. Like you do this one thing and it's, um, it's going to make a huge difference. You, there's a million articles right now online talking about how to work from home and how to change the mentality and how we're going to see remote work be the new norm. And all of that might be true, but I think for each person, it's really individual. So for me, what I did is I kicked my TV and my couch out of my little TV room and I, I made an office. Um, Looks good. I like it. Thank you. Um, with my dining room table. Cause as it turns out, our time, we never use our dining room table except mm. for like catching stuff. So I was like, this is a perfect desk. Um, and then moving the TV sort of into where like our community space in our home was actually was really nice because it means that when we eat dinner and when we watch TV, like we're kind of together, my husband and I are quarantined together, which is been interesting. Um, <laughs> some, some of the other things you could do to stay sane are to really think about self care. You know, we've talked about self care a ton on Think Take a Free. Um, we do, and I should point out we just posted a blog this week, um, Think Tank of Three dot com. Um, one of our podcast guests, Joyce Martyr, a psychotherapist. Uh -huh. She's based in Chicago, but she's a national public speaker, author, entrepreneur. So she gets it. Um, she just wrote a great blog for us yeah. with tips on how to stay sane and, and really get through this with our mental health in mind. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that this has really done for us as a nation that I hope ends up being positive is has really made us look at the norms that we exist in, right? And, and adjust. So I, and that's one of the reasons I sort of switched up not drinking coffee. And it's one of the reasons I'm kind of trying new things while I'm home is I feel like when in, in my normal world, I'm so busy, right? I get up in the morning, mm -hmm. I drink my coffee, I rush into work, I drink more coffee, I work nonstop for the most part. And, and then I get home and I'm exhausted. And so then I have a glass of wine or two and I go, I go to bed, right? Or I read or I watch TV, but like I'm not productive in my, or I wasn't productive in my non-work time because I spent it all at work, which is, I mean, good for work, right? Bad for me. So I think in this new space, like I've really said, okay, what are the things that I kind of wanted to try or wanted to do, but I was either too busy or too tired. And so, one of the things that I do is every day, instead of like going for lunch, uh, my husband and I are walking the dog at lunch. And so we get out, rain or shine. It's been shiny lately, so that's great, but it's been cold. I bet Bella loves that too. Oh, she's so happy. She's like the world's happiest dog. Both of her parents are home. I think every time. dog in America right now is yeah. the happiest dog. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we're keeping moving, I think is one thing that's really important. We know that exercise is good for your mood. We know that exercise is good in reducing anxiety. So whether it's you're doing a free YouTube video, you know, at workout video online, or just taking a walk, like that kind of movement is so good for you. Um, and I think it really helps with managing breaks. So working remotely, it, the reason I created an office was so that I had a separate space. So I don't come in here unless I like, forgot my chapstick, which is pretty normal, in, unless I'm working or doing it. You don't have a living room chapstick? I don't. You don't work. <laughs> I have a chapstick, chapstick in every room in my house, I think. <laughs> living room is the only one I don't. I have it in my kitchen, like in the spice cabinet, and then um, I have it in every other room. Maybe, yeah, yeah. So um, what has been the hardest part for you? So this all sounds amazing. I mean, and also let's just say like getting fresh air, like uh -huh. even if it's not the nicest day, getting outside and, and having your feet on the ground and getting some fresh air, being out in nature, even if you're walking through, you know, the empty city streets, you know, whatever it takes, getting fresh air is good too. What has been the hardest adjustment for you working from home? I think some of the things that have been hard are, are equipment based. At, in my office, I have like two huge dual monitors. I've got like the ergonomic chair. I have a standing desk. Um, I have a 
office filled with plants. Thank God the people who are still in my office are watering them. Um, and, and then I also can walk down the hall to talk to any of the attorneys I need to work with. So I think yes. the, the thing that has been hard at home is adjusting to different um, workspaces, right? So I'm working mm -hmm. off my laptop and this really small monitor that I have. So it's still dual screen, but they're really small. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't walk down the hall to talk to any of my attorneys. The hall only holds my husband or my dog. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the hardest parts. I mean, I, I've been talking, you know, my team, we've, we've had some extra meetings this week, um, like everyone else. And we, we were virtual to begin with. So mm -hmm. we, you know, we, everyone on my team is, is scattered throughout Michigan and Chicago and, and Tennessee. And so we're used to these, you know, we, we yeah. were talking about how our previous setup has really helped us mm -hmm. in this. But it also is really hard because I'm used to meeting face to face with clients, sitting down right. in our office, communicating in that way. For you, just walking down the hall and knocking on someone's door, and yeah. and aside from work, having that those social interactions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I've one of the things I've done is, like I said, I turned my dining room table, which happens to be a really tall dining room table, into its own standing desk, and then dining room chairs are my chair. It's not as comfy, but it still works. I still have my dual screen and I have done just a ton of video. My um, coordinator and I actually had a call yesterday where we talked about, okay, how do we stay feeling connected when, when we're not? And so we kind of just decided like all of our calls are going to be video calls, not because they have to be, not because I'm, I'm checking up on her or she's checking up on me, but just because like, I kind of miss seeing her. I love that. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've started doing that even with my family. I mm -hmm. mean, it might have been a call before, but now, you know, plus my sister's kids always want, they always want video anyway. Her three-year-old's like, no, video, no, no I love phone. It. I love that. <laughs> so, but it, but yeah, it gives us that face-to-face -face interaction and we can, we can see, you know, we can see how someone's doing, see how they're feeling, right. see their mm -hmm. reactions. So let's talk about, you know, work a little bit more um, right. because I know you are just, crazy busy. So tell tell those of us who, those of our viewers who don't know you and what you do, tell us what you do and then how the, how your job has changed in the last several weeks. So I work at um, a law firm, Schwabi Williamson & Wyatt. I love it. it. It's such a cool space. I worked with lawyers at a previous job um, and really got to loving working with lawyers, but they're a difficult breed for sure. And um, the attorneys at Schwabies is just, they have such amazing personalities, they're such good people. Um, so it's really been like awesome, actually. And Schwabi, we could say, is what? The seventh largest um, firm in the Pacific Northwest? I think so, yes. Yeah. So what? How many attorneys do you have? Just to get, just to, for some context. Man, it's a big firm. A lot like that. Um, I think we have 180. 100. Okay, 100, okay. I think we have 180 um, between Oregon, Washington and Alaska, California. And then we have some remote workers or remote attorneys who work in other places in the country. So good, but it, it's a it's a really cool law firm. Um, and and right now law firms are responding, right? Their clients are asking, mm -hmm. what does this mean for my business? What does this mean for taxes? What does this mean for how do I keep my employees safe? Right. How do I keep my my investments safe? How is this affecting the industry? So I work as a, a business development manager essentially for industry groups. So I have three industry groups that I work with, um, manufacturing, retail, and distribution. So right now is a big shift for the manufacturing space. How do you have your workers come in and work, you know, sort of that, working on that line, right? Like there's a supply chain element that we're all using these supplies. Um, and so manufacturing sort of taking a hit at this, at this time and trying to figure out how do they adjust to the new normal. And let's just say, I mean, for a bit of, I'll throw in the, the kind of personal anecdotes um, because I know you have your, your business hat on right now, but in theory, you know, we see a lot of posts on, on social media where everyone should stay home. And, and yes, you know, we're certainly advocating for that. And, and Audrey, you and I are, are, are quarantined to our own homes, right. but there's also a lot of logistical elements that we need to think about and, and things that you're is involved in, for instance, like you said, 
the supply chain. Right. If every single person in the world stays home, how do we still get the products we need? You know, just on right. the most basic level. So right. certainly it's not just a simple and easy solution. There's a lot, a lot of elements at play here and a lot of decisions that go into figuring out and then from your firm's aspect, figuring out the legalities of all of this. You right. need the right thing to do. And then we also have um, the thing that keeps food on the table, right? Yes. Like, right. So there's 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 definitely a tension there. Um, I also work with the real estate and construction industry, and what we're seeing right now is that there's there's not a lot going on, right? And you have a lot of workers right now who can't work remotely, right? Like your carpenters can't work remotely. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? Well, in Seattle, it's sort of business as usual, although there's less folks on the job site. But like in Boston, Boston recently shut down all of their construction sites. Mm -hmm. So construction comes to a halt. Developers stop investing. They stop building. Like, what does that mean for our economy as a whole? Who who has to pay the cost of those delays? So all of those topics are sort of coming up. Um, and then I also work with the transportation ports and maritime industry group. So like the cruise lines right now, right? Like they're taking a pretty big hit. How do you manage that? What happens if people get sick on a vessel? Um, what is going on with the ports right now, right? Like we're seeing there's a real reduction in shipping coming out of China. So the ports are exporting and importing less supplies, right? Less cargo. Mm -hmm. if, if that happens, then, then the ports also are bringing in less money. And then that also affects the rail and the trucking industry, right? Like, because once right. it's it on land, ripple effect. It goes, yeah. Right. And yeah. then that goes back into distribution, right? So every time you order something on Amazon or you order something, uh, that's grown in another country, right? Like say avocados right now are not being grown here because it's too cold, right? So they're mm -hmm. being grown right. in uh, South America. Well, okay, those have to get here somehow. And if you have all of your connections slowing down, that increases cost, slows down the supply chain. So it's all in an interconnected. Um, but it's been a really cool, is that fair to say? Cool and and yeah, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, like, there's still the human experience experience of all of this, right? right? Like, so, like I'm listening to you, and I'm like, wow, like Audrey has really become an expert on something that a month ago you knew nothing about. <laughs> right. You know? Well, it, it 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 shows not that you knew nothing about, yeah, because I'm obsessed speaking. with it, so for sure. <laughs> Well, I mean, that is kind of who you are, Audrea. <laughs> you like get interested in something and then you just become the expert. This is which is why we love you so much and why you're perfect for for dealing with this. But suddenly it's like, you know, you've been, you know, whether you wanted to or not overnight, mm -hmm. this is your new reality. And and it for is. your attorneys that are dealing with this, right. you know, it's not business as usual. It's probably coronavirus all the time, I would imagine. Yeah, it, I mean, it is. And um, we are working to try to figure out how to balance that, right? Because for our clients, they are trying to figure out how to exist in this new norm, but they also still have businesses to run. And so some of the things that are mundane are still meaningful. And so we're trying to work to figure out like what are the pieces of information that we need to distribute that's that's you know COVID nineteen specific, and then what are the pieces of information that we need to distribute that are sort of general evergreen business um, updates? And so mm -hmm. it's a, it is a new norm, and, and and our attorneys are figuring it out. They're fielding calls from their clients as they're trying to figure out, you know, what do I do here? People are, I think, on a range of freaking out and not taking it seriously enough, and so mm -hmm. the questions that companies are asking are are along that that line of is this fake news to oh my god i'm gonna freak out so okay so let me ask you if i can can i put sure. you on the spot you know where where are you you, this? you know where's audrea fink and you know in dealing with this new norm you're quarantined at home with your your husband and your pets and just you know and how are you how are you feeling with all of this especially when it is for you i imagine a lot of like like we said you know mostly you know all coronavirus all the time right. you know, how are you feeling well and i'm in seattle right seattle proper so i'm in, i'm at the epicenter right. i think in the beginning because i just thought this was a really interesting thing when it was overseas i was watching it i was reading about it um you should see my search history right now it's essentially 
all coronavirus and like sprinkled with how did I screw up my last loaf of sourdough bread? <laughs> So, because I've been, we'll talk about in a moment. Um, I've been stressing, I've been yeah. This. yeah, new obsessions. So, so I've been watching it unfold, and it's been really interesting. And and I don't think I ever really bought into the the true like paranoia panic, but I did notice maybe last week or the week before that I was starting to really feel afraid. Afraid, like I was starting to get that like anxiety and like, oh my god, what is this going to mean? And am I going to get sick? And is my family going to get sick? And how? And, and it was just very self-focused fear. And at one point, I kind of had to check myself and be like, all right, I have a good immune system. I'm, I'm middle aged, right? Like I'm not, I'm not in the danger zone, if you will. I have a job that I can easily work remote for. Like, like this is a small change but it's not a major change for me it's mostly a mindset change and a like figure out if i'm gonna put pants on today or not right i also my job is pretty secure right now right because i am working on helping these attorneys put out all this content so that their clients are continuing to call them i have the luxury of being able to walk my dog outside still I have the luxury of being around my husband. Sometimes that's not a luxury, but most of the time it is. So for, for me, I kind of realized I have food on the table. I'm healthy. My family is healthy right now. Like this fear is, is one, not helpful, and two, really self-serving. And maybe I need to be thinking about this from a different perspective. I have a lot of privilege in my space. And I think one of the things that I've really looked into at this point is figuring out how to get away from the self-serving stuff and think about who else is impacted and how I can be beneficial in my community. And I, I've heard about this so much online and I know it seems like such a buzzword, like the most vulnerable populations. But at the same time, I think right now we do need to think about that. You know, my parents are all over 60. Colby's parents are over 60. So they're in that danger zone range. Range. I have plenty of friends who have compromised immune systems, mm -hmm. who are 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 legitimately worried about their health. I have now we're seeing the new the new numbers coming out that a lot more people our age, frankly, are, are hospitalized right now. And mm -hmm. so that you know that's a sobering statistic to know that maybe at first we thought, oh, there's a I think there was a mentality. Um, especially as we saw college students who let's let's face it, if I was 21, how do I know that I wouldn't have gone to the bar too, right? right. Um, but now they're you know the numbers are are reflecting that maybe more people are at risk, perhaps for the second strain than we initially thought. Right. Well, and I think you also sorry. Um, I think you also have to think about how and like i'm not a doctor i'm not a scientist like i avoid science at all costs but at the same time you have to think about how viruses mutate right so what came from china through europe to america that's going to be different so this this virus as it comes along is going to change because they do they adapt mm -hmm. to their the changes in their hosts they adapt to the body that they're in so mm -hmm. we're going to see a lot of changes um and and it's going to be problematic i mean there's a certain part of me that worries about this quarantine because we are not going to build immunities to this virus if we're not getting this virus in mass having said that without quarantine like a whole lot of people who don't need to die are going to die. So, right. and, and a lot more are going to get really sick. And so, you know, there's there's definitely some complication and like some. It's not just cut and dry, stay in your home and, and right. It's we'll, not just an easy answer, which is right. why I think at times like this, you know, what I've realized too is is just the level of distrust in our country. Mm. Um, we, we saw you know, months ago, what was happening in other countries, at least with several weeks warning of what was happening in Italy and in right. Europe. And still we chose to feel like, oh no, that's over there. That's not mm -hmm. here. And mm -hmm. I don't you know, we can get into all of the reasons why Americans have this separation and think that what happens globally isn't happening here. But that's a whole different, that's a whole different topic. Right. For different experts, right. Right? Right. No, I'm certainly not going to weigh in on that. But I do think that, you know, we saw what was coming and we made choices. We all did. We made choices about what 
what we did or did not do. And what I've realized is just the level of distrust because right now we have, whether it's on our TVs, on our computers, on our phones, we have information from our, our governments, local, all the way up through federal, telling us what we should and should not be doing. And still a lot of people are choosing to ignore it. And so just the level of distrust and what that says about us and, and perhaps going forward, what that new norm will be. I would hope that maybe some of the silver linings, as you've been talking about, some of the silver linings that might come from this are, um, you know, maybe maybe uniting in community in different ways. Maybe um, maybe not having such a polarizing political mm -hmm. system where we are. I mean, I mean, let's face it; they're they're all being forced to work together right now, whether they like it or not. And so, um, unfortunately, it took something like this for that to to happen. I talked with my hands, and then I hit my computer. And <laughs> but you know, but but there are some things coming out of this. But in the meantime, I, I like what you were saying, though, Audrea, about, you know, at first you were really fearful and at first you were really focused on your own health um, and on your own well-being of, you know, do you have enough food and do you have the supplies you need and, and that sort of thing. But then you have found ways to be grateful for what you do have and to find, right. you know, that stability, that strength, that comfort in what you do have. And then you brought up a good point. Um, you know, we were talking earlier offline about. Um, various industries right now, including the legal industry and uh, parts of it um, in some form, you know, your department, for example, where there's a lot of job security at the moment because you're very busy and you're dealing with this and what that looks like in the future, we don't know. Right. Um, future meaning like a, a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, who knows? Totally. There's um, never any real job security. It's just that right. right now we're really busy. Yeah. It's really all mindset too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we can, we, anyway, that's a, we, we've got a podcast on that and job security um, with Dr. Dorian Hunter, for sure. Yep. Um, but looking at, um, you know, those who are not feeling secure right now, and I know we've got some tuning in that, you know, you're listening to this and, and hearing Audrea talk about her security because I asked her to share what she's personally going through. But Audrea, we recognize that there are a lot of people um, that are not feeling secure in where they are right now. Um, and, and, you know, and I can speak yeah. from a, a per, uh, personal aspect. Sorry, we're getting all these comments that are just now. I know, right? um, so Connie Sue, this, you know you're not my difficult child. I got to pull that one up. Here we go. <laughs> Connie, you must be at, at Audrea's firm. <laughs> she called attorneys a difficult breed. Hey, we know a lot of attorneys that will, that will claim that and be happy and own it. <laughs> Con yeah, Connie Sue is also very rad. If you guys ever need an environmental attorney, she's your she's your gal. Um, Love it. So I I do think right now we are dealing with with a different ranges of I'm going to call it privilege, but you could call it security. You could call it uh, wealth disparity. I mean, like you you can call it whatever. Yeah, I call right. it privilege. I I I am in good health. I'm financially stable. I can work remotely, my job is not at risk right now, it, any more than it's always at risk because there's no, no such thing as real job security. Um, having said that, I am very aware, especially being in sort of this epicenter of how many vulnerable communities out there are not feeling stable. You have restaurant workers, bartenders, uh, people who work in retail right now, manufacturers whose employees can't come in right like the, there's a whole there's a whole gamut Major of event centers event you know, centers right even yeah and you know and it's interesting because you, as soon as you said the word privilege and i completely agree it's like the definition of that word has changed overnight mm -hmm. right because suddenly right. you have so many people who maybe were doing doing just fine or or good you know getting by maybe they maybe they weren't even you know we have many people who are paycheck to paycheck many people who yep. are without paycheck and in the job search right. um others who maybe had a month or two of savings, not as much as they would like, but still living right. comfortably in the moment. And now, you know, so the definition of privilege has changed. Well, and if you think about it, there's also the people who didn't have any privilege to start off with, right? Like think of all the kids in school who the free and reduced lunches were how they got fed during the day, right? Like we've right. got to think about how are we making sure our kids and their parents very important that their parents also have the ability to feed them and feed themselves. We've Absolutely. got and a artists. whole new level, a whole yep. new level of 
um, appreciation for teachers. Yes. If that's if that's one common theme I'm yes. seeing right now. It's a whole new, yeah. Right, right. We also have, you know, artists right now. They don't have, like, they're having to figure out, can I do what I do online? People aren't going to museums. They're not going to the aquarium. These places that have historically been um, safe and, and secure jobs, especially because Seattle has a huge tourist scene. Mm -hmm. They're not, they're not there anymore. Right? Like our tourism dollars are nil. Um, we have people below the poverty line. You have single parents. I can't even imagine being a single parent right now. I have so many coworkers who are working from home with their kids and their kids are doing online school and they're like, how do we do it? And there's, and there's two of them, right? Like a single parent right now who, who has maybe a, one or two hourly wage jobs like this has got to be horrifying for them right now and mm -hmm. and scary so i think part of what i've i've kind of come to in thinking about it sort of thinking past my own selfish fear is how do you as a person who has this privilege help your community especially when you can't go out into your community and i think that part of my sanity in this shift, which let's be honest, it's not been that long. So it, it has been to think about, okay, can I order takeout? I can afford it, so I'm going to because I want to support restaurants in my area, especially my favorites. Absolutely, and That's I'm mine. not sure if we're experiencing some technical no issues. Can you guys let us know, are you hearing both of us okay? Responsibly. Are you hearing Audrea okay? Check your are you privilege. hearing Jeff okay? Check your privilege. Are you hearing one of us the other? No, oh, I can't tell if it's me yeah. or if it's you or, or what's going on. Guys, if you want to comment and let us know, are you hearing both of us? Are you hearing one of us better than the other? Julie? I think this is kind of our, our new norm too of working with technical issues and through nope. technical issues. Okay. Welcome back. Well, really welcome back to us. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to us. I think this is one of the realities of so many people working on Wi-Fi right now. Um, so, Audrea, uh, thanks for bearing with that. I don't know if it was your, I think your internet went out for a minute, but I know a couple days yeah. ago mine went out. Um, so, I think this is, thanks for everyone for kind of bearing with us. Um, go ahead and jump back on when you see this. Um, and we're just going to kind of wrap things up. Audrea, you were saying... Um, I could hear you, even though I couldn't really interact with you and comment with you. You had some some really great things to say, I think, and I want to I want to kind of recap briefly because I want to make sure we're clear. You were talking about people who do feel secure right now and do have, um, and in some industries, some businesses, this is their time. They deal with disaster planning. Right. They deal with cleanup of biohazards. Um, and so this is the time when they're gonna be busier than ever. And right. so I think it's important to remember that some people are doing well and those people can reach out perhaps and help others. And those that need help, you know, now is the time to, to speak up and, and try to support each other in whatever way we can, even if that's, um, you know, in, in the in the small ways and connecting with each other virtually to remind each other that we're in this together. I agree. Check on your friends, check on your family, check your privilege, you know, check, see how you can engage with your community in a positive way. And if it's not financial, because you don't have the financial means, then that's fine. Think of something different. Be creative. We are literally in this together as a a species so we need to figure out how to help each other through this because this is going to end it might take a little while but it's going to end and we're going to go back and and have a new normal again the only consistent thing in life is change so, so we should embrace that this is different figure out how to help our community and and try to carry on as normal as possible. Absolutely. Well, I'm so glad that Audrey, I think, was able to join us this morning. Um, check out thinktankof3.com. We have um, blog, we blog weekly and we podcast um, at least twice a month. So check out thinktankof3.com and stay with M Connections this afternoon. One of our Think Tank of Three guests um, who also just blogged this week is Joyce Martyr. And she's going to be joining me today at one o'clock to talk about um, the mindset, the mental health of getting through all of this. 
this. So I'm so excited to be able to share that with you today at one o'clock Eastern. Tomorrow morning, John Mashney, an attorney at Foster Swift Law Firm, will be joining us to talk about um, from the business aspect, minimizing some of the legal risk and implications during COVID-19 and what really what businesses could and should be doing right now. So I'm looking forward to talking with John tomorrow morning. And then tomorrow afternoon, Nora Luke, uh, a coach and consultant, uh, will be joining us to talk um, um, about um, how to see the opportunities, even in the middle of all of these challenges. So thank you again to Audrey. I think for joining me today. Thank you to all of you. If you have comments, questions, go ahead and leave them on this post and we'll respond to them. And we hope you all stay well during this time. And we'll see you back here this afternoon at 3.30 Eastern. I think I misspoke. 3.30 Eastern with Joyce Smarter. See you then.